All right, so the cabinet is the same as the Cavalier. It's just half the depth. So I'll set it up and do it the exact same way. This time, one unit back in depth instead of two. That would be half the depth. There's my box, and I'll grid it off. Now, just as before, I have a grid that provides me one, two, three, four, five, six squares on the front, three on the side, two on the top. Those would be all of my units. Remember, I had three, two in width, one in depth. Three in height, two in width, one in depth. I'll identify my surface faces here, back on the top, that midpoint there. As well as the right side. I'll delineate. Notice how when I delineate, I try to stay in the same direction and complete all of those edges first, and then I rotate my paper to complete the rest of them that I need. In this case, I'll rotate it, finish my width lines. Occasionally, you'll miss one here or there. I have to go back and do it. And then now my depth lines. Easier for you to see if I rotate it this way. Those give me my surface faces. I need the interior faces. Oh, look, I missed one. I need the interior edges to make those faces. And that would mean coming back to this edge, down here and over, as well as from this point back to here. So this is really the point I'm looking for. Now I have all the rest of them. I'll connect them together with construction lines to make sure that I like where they sit. I'll delineate those. Now my object looks a little more realistic. At this point, I'll apply tonal shading. 
Now what I'll do is instead of going horizontal like I did over here on the Cavalier for my front face, I'll go vertical. It doesn't matter as long as you stick with either horizontal or vertical lines here. That would mean that I have height for vertical, width for horizontal. Those are the two dimensions that a front face has, height and width. Again, the spacing matters. The closer they are, the darker it's going to look. The further apart they are, the lighter it will look, and the more like an edge they will look. Skip over this top face. Trying to stay parallel to my vertical lines. Because the right side faces also get this layer, since I have decided to make my profile face, my right side face, have three layers of tonal shading, they'll get these vertical lines as well. Might as well draw them in while I'm doing the vertical lines. And I have to choose horizontal or depth. So will I go in the width direction or will I go in depth? And it's up to you. Um, for purposes of ease, I'm just going to rotate my paper slightly and go ahead and apply my depth lines, this time only to my right side face. Trying to stay parallel or at 45 degrees for this oblique. Fill that one in. And again, only the right side because I determined at the beginning of all of this that my right sides would be the one that gets three layers. So there's two layers and one on the front. The one that's missing is my width. I'll rotate my paper and I'll apply the width tonal shade like this. Clean up my tonal shading. It's good to use uh, an eraser shield for this, and in the future it will be more useful. You might find it useful as a beginner. It does help keep it from smearing, as well as to keep the lines nice and crisp. And that's a cabinet.